what uh, role does te is technology going to play in all this, particularly surveillance technology, where where you're kind of taking the human element out of it somewhat, uh, having a more purely rational approach to crime? I mean, th that does seem like the you want you Eric know, Adams RoboCop. I, I don't know that back? I want RoboCop, but uh, I will say these highly law and ordered societies that we were referencing before uh, rely he heavily on automated surveillance um, to implement that order. And uh, on one hand, that is terrifying to me. Like, I, I don't like the idea of ubiquitous government surveillance, obviously. On the other hand, um, you know, automating some aspects of policing, I can certainly see the appeal if a lot of the problematic um, incidents that we see, these high profile incidents seem to like they could have been avoided if like maybe it was just a automated camera or something issuing the ticket. Like what do you, how does automation and surveillance work into your vision of a better policed society? Um, it has, I mean, I'm worried too a little bit in some ways. I think it's sort of inevitable. Um, I hate to say Foucault was right, but he may be on this kind of concept of yeah. surveillance. Um, police can't and shouldn't be locked into the technology of, you know, today or yesterday. Um, so as the technology advances, um, they're going to be tools police are going to use. Um, again, these are choices. I mean, it's good. It would be nice to get out ahead of this. You know, what do we want police drones to do? Um, uh, you know, 10 years ago, it was almost, the concept was unfathomable and to many people dystopian, but it's inevitable. Um, and you know, we, they, they serve a purpose. So yeah. we have to be transparent about this. We have to have discussions about it. Um, but society changes, law enforcement is going to change along with that, but that's a bit different than, and a bit more complicated, uh, than the idea of, you know, cameras and automated enforcement. Um, Again, I don't like zero tolerance. I'm really not for automated enforcement. Um, but mm -hmm. the, the move behind that is usually, oh, because cops are racist, um, so cameras won't be. Um, and yet, if you put cameras where traffic crashes happen and pedestrians die, um, it's still going to have a racially disparate impact. Um, and then what do you do about people that with fake tags and so on? At some point, um, you do need cops making traffic stops. Um, Right. I mean, I think it would, uh, you know, even if there is a, a disparate outcome, it becomes a lot harder to argue that it's a disparate, that it's like, you know, purposely uh, racist or discriminatory against someone. And um, we were talking with uh, Coleman Hughes about this a little bit last week, where if you put that they did that in Chicago and there was that disparate outcome, but the upside was also that these communities where there were a lot of traffic fatalities, the traffic fatalities went down disproportionately helping that community. So there's there's the double edged sword to it. And then also there's, you know, the thing that I always try to keep in mind with when we're talking about police surveillance is this idea that, you know, David Brin, uh, the writer, wrote, talked about a lot of, of surveillance where not only are they surveilling us from above, but it's going to require more surveillance of by us of the authorities from below. And so that's where the transparency comes in that we should have access to, it should be much easier to requisition any footage that is caught uh, by police and, and to be able to surveil what they're doing. Like it, it, this, the road has to go both ways if, if we're headed down that it's path. It's messy though. I mean, I, I'm for that. Dangerous future. I'm for that, but you know, do you want to have access when the cops go and investigate a sexual child abuse case um you know people are having the worst day of their lives and cops are going into their home i don't you know it shouldn't be i want transparency but at some point there's a matter of privacy as well um and it's hard to you know these are tough rules and regulations and and, and decisions to make about this stuff but mm -hmm. the other i think perhaps an overarching point about surveillance um it's, it is by its nature reactive. You know, the video in a bodega can identify um, who the killer is, um, in part because that person is almost assuredly already in the system and, you know, facial recognition comes into play in that. Um, gang databases can come in and play that. And of course, people are, you know, 
some people are fighting all these things because they don't want policing. Um, but it, they're they're reactive in nature, uh, and ultimately, police can be proactive and prevent crime, and that requires men and women um, using brains and using their intelligence. And you know, again, that tough part of good leadership is making sure it doesn't go overboard. Um, there's a constant problem in policing of the statistical tail wagging the dog. Um, you have to think, why are you doing this? What's the goal? And the goal never should be, well, I made an arrest. I mean, unless actually after the fact, that might be the goal. Uh, but as a in terms of proactive policing, you have to figure out what, what are we trying to accomplish and how do we accomplish that? Um, but that's never going to be done um, solely with cameras and, and, and surveillance. At some point, it does involve... Um, you know, physically arresting somebody. We can't, we can't get away from that. And, and I would argue we don't, we shouldn't, we don't want to, but um, the surveillance and, and technology part, and I, I think it's sort of, we need that discussion, but we shouldn't let it distract from um, the core of actual good, legal, moral, constitutional policing. Hey, thanks for watching that clip from our show, Just Asking Questions. You can watch another clip here or the full episode here and please subscribe to Reason's YouTube channel and the Just Asking Questions podcast feed for notifications when we post new episodes every Thursday.